In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Google Trends to find a niche for your course, find the perfect keywords for your course title, and time your launch. So what is Google Trends? It's a tool that shows how popular any topic is over time and region. And the best way to learn how to use it is by giving you examples. And I have 10 examples on different areas that you could be teaching on. And the first one is going to be computer science. Then we got programming languages, video editing tools, business advice, finance advice, languages, learning languages, learning instruments, communication tools, social media tools, and finally, different course platforms. We're going to use Google Trends to figure out if we were to choose any of these topics, which course would be the ideal one to create based on the keywords that are most popular. Let's do it. So let's say you're an awesome computer scientist and you want to teach online, share your knowledge, but you're not sure which topic should you cover. You know a lot of stuff, but how do you know which one to choose? You go to Google Trends and it's a free tool, launch it, and now start typing the topics you're interested in. So in your case, let's say you're interested in data mining, you enter that first keyword and you can see the popularity or interest over time. I would recommend that you choose at least uh, five years or since the beginning uh, that has been recorded, which is 2004. And you can see that it's been declining pretty steep since 2004 to 2006 and then steadily declining over the years until today. This by itself is only telling us a little piece of information, which is important. It's the fact that it's declining over time. But how is it doing in relation to other topics that you could teach? For example, deep learning. Okay, so we got something very interesting here. Deep learning was not very popular until 2012 when it started to pick up some interests. And we can see there's a transition moment here in June 2016 where deep learning became a more popular topic and it surpassed data mining. So if you're considering whether to do a course in data mining or deep learning, you get the answer right here. But what about something else like artificial intelligence? Now we have even more interesting data. You can see that although artificial intelligence was following the same curve as a data mining, it started to pick up steam also around the same time as deep learning. And we can see here in, in September 2014, artificial intelligence surpassed data mining and became even more popular than deep learning. And there was a peak in 2018. So it seems that all of them are declining, but if you were to choose a topic, artificial intelligence would still be the winner. Now, another thing that is very useful to do with Google Trends is not just to see the interest over time, is to find out which countries or which regions in the world are these keywords more popular in. If we go to worldwide, we can see which countries one or the other is more popular. And in this map, we see a lot of diversity. We can see in North America, United States and Canada, and also in Australia, artificial intelligence is the most popular topic of the three. However, in China, deep learning is the most popular one. Also in France, but in the rest of the world, data mining, like in Russia and South America, is the most popular one. So it, you got to really pay attention to what is your target audience. So in English speaking countries, artificial intelligence would be the most popular topic in South America. And we have here also Algeria, so Northern Africa and Russia. We got data mining. And in China, for some reason, deep learning is the most popular one. With this information and based on your target audience and the language that your target audience speaks, you can make a more informed choice as to which topic to teach on your course. So you got the gist of it. Now we're going to do the same thing for nine other categories that you could be teaching on so you can see real examples. We're going to go quickly over them because now you know the basics of how it works. Let's say now you want to teach a computer language and we're going to compare three popular programming languages like Python, JavaScript, and PHP. And we can see that PHP and JavaScript have been steadily declining and that around 2015, Python overtook JavaScript and in December 2016, Python overtook PHP. And it's still going on an upwards trend, which means if you were to create a course, you would probably want to choose a course on Python. Now, 
This is not necessarily true because maybe now Python is a very competitive topic and you may want to create a great course on PHP. The only problem is that if you want longevity on your course, you want to pick up a growing trend because this means that if you were to pick PHP, probably PHP in another six or seven years is going to keep declining because we can see there is a trend towards less popularity. That means that you're probably going to be getting less and less sales, whereas a good Python course will have more longevity. Again, if we go after regions, there's quite a bit of disparity in terms of popularity. We can see that PHP is still dominant in a big chunk of the world. So in all South America, all Russia, Asia, and Europe, PHP is still the number one programming language. But when we go to English speaking countries, like North America, Canada, United States, South Africa, all the Nordic countries, England, the United Kingdom, and New Zealand and Australia, Python is definitely by far the most popular programming language. Let's say that you're into video editing and you want to teach one of the most popular video editing tools. We have Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. We can see that Final Cut Pro is definitely the most popular tool worldwide. And there's been a slight decline of Final Cut since 2016, but there's a newcomer called DaVinci Resolve, which has the steepest upward trending curve. So that would be one that you want to probably consider. Now, in terms of interest by region, we can see that in the United States, Final Cut Pro is still king. But in the rest of the world, Adobe Premiere is the most popular tool. Now, we go down, we can see that of uh, all the countries where Premiere Pro is popular, in Australia, is the most popular one. And very interesting, Final Cut Pro, out of all the countries in the world, for some reason, in China, they really like it. Let's say that you want to create a course in business. And now it's not so much about choosing which course, but more about the title. Which keywords for that topic are most popular and therefore you probably want to choose in order to get more organic traffic. So in this case, we want to create a course on business and we have business consulting, business strategy and business coaching. We can see that the most popular one is business strategy. So if you're going to create a course on business, you probably want to put the strategy keyword in it, except that it depends on what region of the world are. Definitely, if you're in China, it seems that by far business strategy is something that Chinese people seem to be searching for a lot more than, let's say, business consulting, where there is actually almost zero search volume. So definitely, if you, have, if you are trying to create a business course in China, make sure you don't put consulting on it because nobody's looking for it. Almost the same thing for uh, coaching. There's very little searches in comparison to business strategy. And the same in North America, but when you go to South America and Asia and Europe, uh, business consulting, those keywords, consulting specifically, it's more popular. There's another interesting thing about business strategy is that it seems to be quite seasonal. For some reason, there is dips that seem to happen regularly. So if we look here at the dip, we can see that around December, there is a low point. We got here January, a low point, December, 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 and December. So for some reason, the search volume for business strategy, it goes down at the end of the year. I guess people are on holidays and they're not looking for strategy courses or information on business strategy. So if you want something less seasonal, you would go for either business coaching or business consulting. And if you want to go for business strategy, you probably want to make sure you're not launching the course in December or early January because there's a very little search volume during that time of the year. Let's say you want to do a course on finance, whether it's financial advice or helping people retire early. And what I really love about Google Trends is that there are so many surprises that will help you make better and more informed decisions when it comes down to choosing a topic for your course. And you can see here that although at the beginning of the 2000s, financial advice was way more popular than early retirement in keyword searches around 2010, for some reason, early retirement as a search topic became a little bit more popular. So they're about the same right now, but you can see that early retirement has become more popular. Again, very important to look within your region. So early retirement is definitely more popular in English-speaking countries, as you can see, all North America, 
That's the more popular keyword. But in South America and Australia, which is very interesting because traditionally a keyword would be popular among all the countries that speak the same language. But it's not the case here because you can see in Australia, we got financial advice way more popular than early retirement as a keyword. So if you're trying to target in Australia for a course on finance, there's no question you should be choosing something that has the keywords financial advice in it. Language courses are very popular and there is a ton of competition. So you gotta be very careful how you choose the title of your course so you have a chance to be found, but that you're not competing with every single body else that is trying to teach online. Spanish is uh, an example that I'm using here and you could call or use these keywords in your description of your course or the title of your course, like learn Spanish fast, learn Spanish online or Spanish for beginners. We can see Spanish for beginners is the most popular one, but we can see learn Spanish online became more popular than Spanish for beginners in March 2020. And the reason why is because this was the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and everybody was at home trying to learn new languages from home. And of course they wanted to do this remotely and online would be the right keyword to find courses that teach you how to learn Spanish from home. So it depends on what's happening in the world. Things may change within a few months and you wanna be aware of this if you happen to be releasing a course at a time. So before you release a course, make sure that you see how the trend is going. Courses on musical instruments are also very popular. Guitar probably being one of the most popular well, together with piano. And let's say you wanna create a course on how to play the guitar, but you gotta choose the right keywords. Okay, we can see that how to play the guitar or how to play guitar for beginners is the most popular by far, but it's quite seasonal as well. We can see on December, uh, January, this is when people are doing their New Year's resolution, they decide to pick up an instrument and then they forget about it. And then they remember it, and then they forget about it. And here during the coronavirus pandemic, there's also a spike on people stuck at home and they're like, what, what am I doing with my time? Let's learn an instrument. And all the other ones, let's remove how to play guitar for beginners because there's definitely gonna be a huge competition for that. Uh, so if we wanna choose among the three other ones, we can see that how to, play guitar scales is the most popular one. And we can compare in different countries, right, to see which one it is. In this case, we're looking at worldwide for the past five years. So you got how to play the guitar with nails, which is also quite popular, how to play guitar and sing. Anyways, you have to try different variations to see which one is both popular and you could create a great course on that specific keyword variation so you're not competing a lot, but there's still enough search volume that there is a chance for people to find you and buy your course. Here we have Skype, Google Meet, and Zoom, which are the most popular video conferencing tools. Let's say you wanna create a course in one of them, then obviously you would choose Zoom, specifically during the middle of the pandemic, it was so much more popular than the other three tools because right through uh, in the beginning, they were pretty equal but maybe through marketing or through the features that they offered, it became so much more popular. Now we can see what happened in other parts of the world because this is just United States, but you can see in the rest of the world is very similar, although we can see that Skype was a more popular choice during the pandemic, although now it's less, it's the least popular after the pandemic. And in the rest of the world, we can see that uh, Zoom dominates by far and Definitely, it's the winning tool in that case. So here we have YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. YouTube has been declining steadily over the years. Instagram is been increasing a little bit, and we have a newcomer, TikTok, which is still trailing quite behind YouTube and Instagram, but it's doing well in other countries. For example, if we go here, in India, TikTok seems to be way more popular than either YouTube or Instagram. Again, if your audience is in India, you probably wanna create a course on TikTok. And you wanna be checking back to see how these trends are changing in case there's some kind of seasonal event that makes one of these tools more popular than the other. Course hosting platforms, here we have Teachable, Thinkific, and Hotmart. In North America, specifically in the United States here, we can see that Teachable is the most popular one. 
But if we go the way down, we see that there is a region in the United States, Florida, where Hotmart is more popular as a course hosting platform or as a platform in itself. It turns out that in the whole world, Hotmart is way more popular than either Teachable or Thinkific. And during the pandemic, there was a big uptake on Hotmart, and now it's coming down, but it's still almost an order of magnitude or more, more popular worldwide than the two other most popular course hosting platforms, Teachable and Thinkific. Now, this is information you could take to decide where you want to host your courses or which hosting platform you want to teach if you're into teaching hosting platforms like myself. But be aware that although worldwide Hotmart is more popular, it is only more popular in Spanish-speaking countries, and in Brazil specifically, because this is where Hotmart originated from. So you can see clear on the worldwide map that Hotmart is extremely popular in South American countries. And this is very easy to find out thanks to the fact that we have a tool like Google Trends. I hope that going over these 10 different categories using Google Trends helps you understand how to use it to find what's popular, to find out how to time your launch for your courses, and to use the best possible keywords on your course titles and course descriptions. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.